Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. He is Dr. Crow from Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine uh, joining us this morning. Austin, how we doing, man? Fantastic. Beautiful day out there. Looking like a beautiful weekend ahead of us. Absolutely, man. So, uh, got anything planned up for, for Father's Day weekend? I'm on call this weekend, so stay okay. safe out there, everybody, for all of our sakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to lead things off, uh, talk a little baseball. Robert Gasser, uh, another Brewers uh, pitcher that uh, is banged up here. And I was kind of talking about a little bit earlier. I, I don't know how many times I've heard of a player or even a person getting a third opinion on, on an injury right now, but uh, he's dealing with an, an elbow injury, and uh, I, I know he went to see a doctor that you've mentioned a few times or quite a bit uh, on mm-hmm. our program here, but it, from my understanding, it's a UCL injury, but it's not torn, but one of the recommendations was surgery to maybe stabilize it or, or strengthen it. it. Would that be, is that something common to, even if it's not torn, that maybe uh, a, a surgery could be recommended to maybe strengthen that that ligament. Yeah, that'd be more along the lines of that internal brace option that we've talked about, which is gaining popularity. Um, so basically, you're going to try to reinforce it because that whole medial elbow, it's there's a lot of interplay. So the, the, you know the world famous UCL um, Tommy John ligament. You know, as there are issues with that, it often shift stress to the the the, the di- basically dynamic stabilizers which are the flexors so the muscle tendon unit then can get problems as well so whenever you start seeing pictures of medial elbow pain even if it isn't directly a tear in the ucl it often originates back to it so there is a, a train of thought that if you go ahead and do an internal brace and strengthen that that will then in turn offload those flexors and, and resolve the medial sided elbow pain but it's it is a somewhat i don't want to say controversial but it's a somewhat aggressive take but if people are having persistent issues then sometimes you have to think about it but that's definitely why you're getting two three opinions i mean yeah i mean it's not common people go out for you know three four five opinions on an elbow if you're a major league baseball player it's probably a little more common but even then I mean, if you're seeing guys like Neil Ella Trash or, or Brian Cole or Jim Andrews, I mean, that's those are the kind of guys that they see. So they're seeing the biggest names in orthopedics, um, and that, that's that's the opinions they're getting. And, and you know, there's going to be even even between them, there's variability because you know it's not always black and white. You know, this isn't like a tibia fracture where you look at it and say, well, the bone's broken or it's not. That's not the way that ligaments and soft tissue work. You can have these kind of partial injuries, low grade injuries or kind of complex interplay where you feel if you take care of one problem, it can parlay into another. So uh, complex, I guess, to sum it up. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It, when, when somebody like an athlete goes out and, and gets these multiple opinions, is he essentially, he or she essentially looking for that opinion that would get them back on the field quicker? Is, is that kind of the main thing? Or are they just looking maybe for, for, for the best option overall for, for recovery? Well, I think it depends. I mean, at the end of the day, really what you're looking for is what it what aligns with what their thoughts are. I mean, really, because at the end of the day, I mean, when I present any option to a patient um, with surgery, and this is true for an athlete or a you know, 90-year-old grandma with an arthritic knee, I mean, the same thing, you lay out options for them. And most problems, there are multiple options. And so sometimes it is very much dealer's choice where you say, look, these are three different things we can consider doing. And we call that shared decision making, where you try to get the patient involved in their own health care because it's it's their body. Um, now, sometimes things are very obvious, but when you're dealing with these kind of, you know, tweeners, if you will, it often comes down very much to opinion. So, like I said, you can go see ten of the world's most prominent elbow surgeons, and you'll probably get ten slightly different opinions. So then it comes down to, well, what makes sense to the, the athlete? But let me tell you, it's more than just them. I mean, they'll have their coaching staff, they'll have their agents. I mean, it's it's very it's a very kind of complex kind of collaboration between all those different people. Often, the team's training staff um, they'll all kind of weigh in on it. And so, yeah, I mean, there are times where you're saying, "Look, we got to think about what's the most important long term strategy." Or sometimes it'll say, "Look, we have we're making a run in the playoffs. What can get me back on the field?" Yes, it may not be the world's best long term strategy, but we need to be on the field now. Um, so it depends. So it, it is it is variable, I guess, to, mm-hmm. to put it bluntly. Would his uh, issue with bone spurs in, in spring training have any relation to this, or could have it made it worse or, or caused uh, the, this type of injury? Yeah, so when we see spurring in the elbow, 
that often is a sign of instability. So often it'll be off of what's called the olecranon, which is kind of the knob at the tip of your elbow. Um, and it's not that part. That's the part away from the joint. That also goes in to make up the joint. So when you throw, if the inner part of the elbow just has a little bit of laxity, the olecranon shifts inside the, what's called the olecranon fossa, and it rubs against there. So if you see spurring along that medial edge, it suggests that there's UCL or ulnar instability. And so that's one of the signs where you may say, again, you may say in the MRI, look, the, the ligament's not torn, but it suggests that there is instability, and that could be why you're having two, three, four opinions saying, look, I think that this is really what's going on. And Because, and, again, it's more of like a, you know, there's, where there's smoke, there's fire kind of thing, as mm-hmm. opposed to seeing it, you're inferring it. So, yeah, that definitely could be playing a role. Interesting stuff. Dr. Crow, inside the training room, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. I want to revisit uh, an injury that we talked about a, a few months ago here, uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe Burrow, remember he had that wrist injury, tore some mm-hmm. ligaments, and you know it looked like he was struggling on the sidelines. That that image of like gripping a football and and, and such. Mm-hmm. And you know, topic we've been talking about is quarterback contracts right now with Trevor Lawrence getting the big deal. He's matching Joe Burrow's per year. There, can we kind of revisit Burrow's injury in, in a sense? Like, mm-hmm. is was there some or still maybe some long term concern about about that injury because? I think when you and I talked about it, there it was maybe a bigger injury than what I think a lot of people kind of assumed or expected. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> huge, huge, huge implications. So is it possible he comes back from that? Yes, it is. Is that a good injury? No, it is not. I mean, they're uh, harking back to, like, the Tiger Woods, you know, when, when he had that bad fracture in his foot. Like, I don't know if you remember me saying, like, that's just a bad injury. A lot of bad things are going to come. I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at what – now, he's obviously come back and is doing – well, all things considered, but he ended up having to have a fusion. There are just some injuries where you know bad things are going to happen, and an injury to that ligament, it is just one of the ligaments in the body we don't have great solutions for. Not to say it can't work, but they just don't have a tremendously high success rate. And so the other thing is we're not trying to get him back to daily life activities. We're trying to get him to grip a football and throw it at an elite level um, because he was one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. I, I mean, I don't want to be a doomsday kind of person, but I just don't think he'll ever have that same wrist strength, hand strength, um, range of motion, strength. All those things are going to be affected. Um, is it going to be a small amount or a large amount? That remains to be seen. But I I mean, it's a bad injury. I've seen a lot of people have this injury and never get back to where they were before. And, and, I'm, and I'm not even talking NFL. I'm talking like daily life stuff. So, yeah, it is a big injury. Now, the other question is, is, was it a complete disruption or were they saying, look, it's, it's partially torn and let's kind of augment it? Yeah, then it has a better chance. And there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways to address it, um, which honestly is not a good thing because if there was one right way, everyone would do it. So there's a lot of different ways because everyone says, well, maybe this will work better than the other stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know exactly which technique he had done, but none of them are perfect. We'll put it that way. So, yeah, this is – that is a – a huge deal and I, I haven't seen a lot as far as like him getting back and doing any kind of off-season stuff so i don't know if there's been any updates that you've seen but i have not seen in the news much for him you know yeah. playing or using that at all um and and he may not even be ready to be doing any of those kind of drills um so it'll be it'll be an absolute work in progress and will be a huge question mark in the future i'll i'll be you know, straight up, I, I just, it's a big injury, absolutely. Yeah, I was just kind of reading some of the quotes when it happened, too, because I was, like, curious, how does something like that happen? And, and he said he just felt hurt a pop and on, on a throw, uh, on a touchdown pass. It wasn't like a hit or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it was probably partially injured with, with something along the way. <clears throat> Scapolunate injuries, which is what that ligament is, it sits between two of those, we call them the carpal or wrist bones, or the small bones that make up the wrist. Um, and the scapulonate is, ba- is basically a ligament that holds it all together. Mm-hmm. So when that tears, the bones shift a little bit. So it's not like your wrist falls apart, but the bones don't link together the way they're supposed to. So when you move and load it, it causes a ton of problems. Anyway, the, u- it, the injury usually occurs when you land on like an outstretched hand and it really forces the wrist back. It loads it. So we sometimes see them in conjunction with scapoid fractures or other carpal bone injuries. Um, but yeah, it's a bad one. It absolutely is. So um, it probably had an injury, and then he just did something that took it the rest of the way in that pop. But again, was it complete or partial? Uh, they never really disclosed that, and they also didn't disclose exactly the technique that was done to, to reconstruct or repair it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wish him the best. I mean, he's he obviously is a phenomenal athlete, and you want to see him get back at that high level. 
Um, but time will tell. Yeah, uh, he I read a quote from a couple days from from him. He said he's still rehabbing it, um, but uh, you know he wouldn't say what percentage he's currently at. He said tough to say what percentage he's currently at. That that doesn't bode well. It doesn't sound like either. So yeah, yeah. I, I just you know, I mean, there's been reports. You know, people saying yeah, he'll be fine. But I I would say, I mean, he he may be. Yeah, and I'd love to be wrong that this is, and I'm overplaying this, but. Just it just they're just injuries. Sometimes you see them and you're like, this one is we're in a kind of salvage mode. Like we're we're going to try get you back to where you were, but we're we're trying to salvage a bad situation, and that's that type of injury. It mm-hmm. really is. Last one here, uh, Krista Porzingis, uh, who was reading this on uh, CBS Sports, where it said that uh, he suffered a rare injury, and I'm going to butcher the name, uh, torn medial reticulum. Uh, you butchered that. That was not even close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Retinaculum. Oh man, see that's why I'm not. A, that's the reason why I'm not a doctor. <laughs> uh, but it says it allows a dislocation of the posterior uh, tibialis tendon. Is that correct? Tib- tibialis. You're close. That one was closer. I'll give you that one. Dang. That one was close. <laughs> okay. So what the heck is that in uh, in English, yeah. please? Yeah. So so we retinacular injuries are actually quite common, but they're almost universally in the outer part of the ankle so when people have recurrent lateral ankle instability so you roll your ankle one of the associated injuries we'll see is a tearing of the lateral or outer retinaculum and then the perineal tendons can click and pop so if anyone out there is spraining their ankle and they roll their ankle and it makes a loud click and pop and they can feel their tendons snapping and moving that's not a good thing that's basically them falling out of the groove that they're in um now on the inner part or medial ankle Instead of the perineals, you have your a group of tendons, but one of them in this case is called the posterior tibial tendon. That's the tendon that holds your arch up. So that's like the arch tendon. And so like all tendons that, that traverse across the joint, they have to sit in a groove. The covering is called the retinaculum. So basically it's a little sheath that helps keep the tendon right where it's supposed to be. Um, and I can say in my career, I've only seen a couple injuries to the, to the retinaculum on the medial side. It's very rare. Lateral, very common. Medial, very rare. Um, it is relatively, I won't say easily addressed, but it, it's generally a surgical um, procedure. If it's completely torn, we have to repair or reconstruct that to keep the tendons back in place. Now, on the medial side, it, you know, it, it's a fairly long structure, that retinaculum. It, I, they didn't really say if it's completely torn or partially torn. If it's partially, sometimes you can, like, put someone in a boot or cast and let it try heal back. If it is fully, if those uh, tendons, so that, well, in this case, one tendon is dislocating, they're going to have to go in and repair or reconstruct that, and that would be a bigger deal. But it still should be relatively straightforward, and I would expect him to get back from that, but obviously it, it depends on the severity of the injury, and I haven't seen in a, in a report whether it's complete or partial. Mm-hmm. Man, well, at least Boston's up 3-0. I don't think they have to play him and <laughs> try to play him or anything like that. Yeah, so. it has been a, it has been one one sided uh, playoff so far. Yeah, no doubt. He's Doctor Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, dude. Thank you for uh, correcting me in my mispronunciations. I mean that I I, I embarrass myself sometimes when I have to ask you. We'll, that, we'll, so. we'll get you there. Yeah, we'll get you there. <laughs> I need like the sound out chart, you know, like in school when we're kids <laughs> learning that. So, oh man, yeah, phonetics. Yeah, there you go. Hey, have a uh, happy Father's Day uh, to, to you, Dr. Crow. Uh, enjoy it as much as you can, but uh, we appreciate you every time that, that you're on on Friday morning. So have a fantastic weekend, and we'll catch up with you again soon, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Happy Father's Day to you and all the, all the dads out there. Appreciate that. There you go. Dr. Crow inside the training room, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.